very good evening and good morning to the viewers across the globe here. And uh, this is Nish Kumar Singh. I would like to get started with a quick introduction from me. That is, of course, uh, Shruti has given you a brief outline about my portfolio. Let's add a little more so that you understand that what kind of uh, environment we'll be having in the following content and discussion today in this webinar. Of course, I come over the background of uh, testing and uh, where earlier I was actually a developer who turned into a tester and finally a test consultant. Automation is my fuel, I can say, because it attracts me a lot and have a great thing to explore about. And I basically hear a lot of more on the automation side and look forward to implement a lot of things with respect to automation and not only to individuals, but also to a lot of organizations across the globe to help them implement automation in their organization. At the same time, overcome certain barriers when you do the same within the organization. Of course, this has taken almost around 15 years to bring me here and uh, I've been still exploring a lot of new things to assist organization and their practices, including their team members. I have been certified with a lot of things so far in a journey of 15 years of experience. Uh, first of all, what we are talking about today, I would like to say uh, ISTQB is one of the major certifications which I'm involved with. And I myself as a test manager certified, including a lot of other certification which we will be talking about in today's session. So like TA, which stands for test analyst, technical test analyst, agile, and of course the foundation where we start the journey of certification with ISTQ. Also, a HPE certified instructor for different tools of HPE now, which has moved to micro focus, that is ALM, UFT, Lodra. And additionally, I'm certified with many other tool practices as well, like Tosca, Microsoft certified trainer, and Salesforce as well. Additionally, of course, my job involves a lot of consultation, project and process orientation, gap analysis in the process and team alignment as well, which helps the organizations to achieve a success rate in terms of achieving their goal, as well as a lot of other factors which influence their cost of quality and determining the deadlines on time. So, so far, it's been a great journey for me. In 15 years, I have been to 26 plus countries and a big figure of 10,000 plus participants whom I have trained myself. So that's great. And I would like to thank Knowledge Hub for giving, them, giving me this opportunity to express my thoughts and also give you a quick overview of what exactly ISTQB is all about and how you can get certified with one of that. To start with the certification, the very first thing is I would like to give you a little heads up on what we will be having in today's agenda. In today's webinar, we will be covering introduction to ISTQB, that what exactly ISTQB is all about, what this organization is, how it can be helpful to you as an individual or a professional working in an organization, or probably even if you are a freelancer. Also, what kind of certifications are provided by ISTQB? That means how many people or how many different professionals can actually look forward to ISTQB to be certified for their practices and activities. Also, I'll be helping you by giving you a quick heads up and how to prepare for the examination. Because of course, examination requires an efficient preparation before you can actually hit the examination and qualify to get pass. Also, I'll be giving you certain input on how you can schedule one for yourself. That means these examination can be pre-booked and scheduled on a given timeline to appear for the examination and get certified. And last but not the least, I'll be sharing certain outputs and some of the inputs with respect to how to pass the examination on your first attempt. So let's get started with this. And of course, we will have some good time to have a Q&A session to answer your valuable queries. The very first thing is introduction to ISTQB, where ISTQB stands for International Software Testing Qualification Board, which is an international body, as the name suggests, it recognizes individuals or professionals with a certification 
which generally carries an international recognition. So once you are certified, you are actually recognized globally and you have your wings open to touch the sky with glory and reach any organization across the globe. A lot of organizations also look forward for these kind of certification for their team members to get a lot of projects from different countries and different clients. Because a lot of clients nowadays are having a mandatory prerequisite to have professionals or team of professionals to be certified with ISTQB. Now, to know more about this organization, you can actually visit their official website, which is istqb.org which you can right now see on your screen to explore more about that. Also, there are a lot of certified member boards, or I can say recognized member boards in different countries. So no matter which country you are from, there will be a locally recognized member board, which generally takes care of your examination, process, scheduling, and certification put together, all things with respect to ISTQB certification. Who can appear? Anyone. Anyone who has a good understanding of testing and with respect to different certification programs, you can look for the prerequisite which are specific to each level and each different certification can just fulfill that prerequisite and you are good to go. The best thing comes with the certification validity. Right now, most of the certifications, I say most, which means that sometimes not all the certifications are valid for lifetime. So most of the certifications right now are valid for lifetime. That means you write your examination once for all, and you don't have to actually worry about rewriting them again and again. So all you are done is once you have written the examination, you are through with it, then you just don't have to reappear for the same. It's as simple as like when you talk about your academics, you graduate, and even if the syllabus changes or new concepts comes into picture, you don't have to re-graduate from that graduation. And that's how simple ISTQB also comes up with that once you're certified, you're certified for your lifetime. And that's actually a great news from ISTQB. Now, of course, we are talking about certification by ISTQB, or not only certification, I have to insist on certifications of ISTQ. So as you see on your screen right now, there are several certifications which are provided by uh, the ISTQB. And just a moment. All right, so here you see all the certifications listed on your screen right now, which actually starts with a basic component, which starts with foundation level certified test. That means this tree, what you see right now on your screen, is actually the pathway to get certified by different certification, which actually starts with the foundation level certification, which we also know commonly as ISTQB foundation level or CTFL, which means certified tester foundation level. This is the very first step to start your journey with the certification, which talks a little bit about the basic fundamentals of ISTQB or testing. Not exactly ISTQB, but yes, more of a kind of the basic terminologies, basic methodologies, fundamentals of testing, and include a lot of different uh, you know, ingredients to put together for your certification. Where you see when you talk about the basic ingredients of the certification includes what is a test process, what is static testing? What are the different types of review? What are technical techniques or test design techniques? How a test management works together? And what kind of you know, responsibilities does a manager or a tester have? And what is risk and testing? What is defect management? So as you look at certain contents here, yes, we do have a lot of basic things when it comes to foundation. And remember team, the foundation certification is not domain specific, purposefully designed in such a way that anyone, irrespective of their background, irrespective of their domain, they can appear in foundation level and get started with their ISTQB certification journey. Once you're done with your foundation level certification, you can look forward for the 
the branches what you see at the bottom. Either you can move towards Agile certification, if that involves your role more about working in an Agile team, then you can look forward to foundation level Agile test. Additionally, if you are done with that, you can look forward to the next level of it, which we call it as advanced level Agile technical tester. Now the next slide, we do have some core certifications, which is the way here we will go upside this way where you find some of the advanced level certifications like technical test analyst, test analyst, or test manager. Now the three things come from three different aspects. If you have been working with an organization, you would definitely understand what kind of role do you have. Where test manager is a main person of the organization who defines the schedule, planning, estimation, and a lot of other things with respect to testing. Whereas test analyst, speaks more from the functional point of view, like how unit testing, integration testing, or you know system testing, and all other things are being performed. So test analyst is the main responsible person when it comes to the functional testing, whereas technical test analyst is from the non-functional point of view. But if you look on the other side, we do have a branch here, which is for specialized testing. Like when you talk about automotive tester, mobile tester, gambling tester, performance testing, acceptance testing, there are a lot of such things. That means ISTQB has not left out anyone who is one or the other way involved with any kind of professional testing practices. So no matter what background you come with, what kind of organization you are working with, you can just look into the list of the certifications which we have for you and you can get certified with that respective thing. Also, the fourth one goes with the automation testing, so you can look forward to that as well. And these are a lot of interesting certifications, which adds a lot of value to your professional learning, as well as professional implementation of testing practices. So yes, we do have catering for everyone. But yes, there's an additional thing on top of the core path that is expert level. When you look at the expert level, that's an add-on or expert level certification provided to a lot of you who get through all the advanced level certification. So once you are done with these three certifications, you can look forward to expert level certification as well, which includes just now or right now we have two certification at expert level, that is test management and improving the test process. So yeah, that's quite interesting to know that you do have something called as expert level to be provided by the ISTQB. Yeah, so the only thing which you can get a catch from here as an additional information is that the prerequisite for any certification is the previous certification. So if, for example, you are targeting to get certified with Agile Technical Tester, then you must be certified with foundation level Agile tester. If in case you are not, then look forward to certify with the Agile foundation tester, and then look forward to the advanced level of Agile technical tester. And of course, to get certified with Agile foundation level, you have to be certified with foundation level ISTQB. So that's how the journey goes. So to start with, the very first one will be to start with CTFO and then choose your path wisely. But probably a lot of questions which people ask me when I give them introduction to the certification tree, that is that anyone can only look forward to any one path? No. Team, you are free to select or choose your own path at any point of time. No matter you are certified with Agile Foundation Tester and tomorrow you might look for any additional tester then you can look for another certification from different tree. So say if you are Agile Tester Certified Foundation level, you can also look forward for the next certification as Test Analyst. So that's up to you and you can look forward to get certified with any one of these certification irrespective of the path. But the only condition is the prerequisite is the previous examination in that tree. So you must get qualified with that to start or look forward for the next certification. So that's about the different certifications by ISTQB. 
the next thing here is how to prepare. And of course, there's a good important preparation which you need to have before you can look forward to write the examination. A lot of examination come with a prerequisite as mandatory training, but ICQB has a relaxation here. They do not have a mandatory prerequisite for the training. But yes, a training gives you a lot of value. And that is what I'm going to explain you here, that how your preparation can be helpful in terms of helping you to write your examination and pass the examination in first attempt. First of all, you may find a lot of resources on the official website, that is istqb.org. There are a lot of syllabus, a lot of study material, as well as some sample questions as well which will give you a quick overview of what they are looking forward for you to prepare on and what kind of syllabus will be covered and then how the questions will be asked to you. Additionally, you can also look for books from different authors written by well famous or reputed authors from ISTQB itself. So you see some of the books which are commonly recommended in ISTQB preparation, which you can look forward to buy or purchase them through different online sources and look forward to prepare. Also, you do find a lot of video-based tutorials online. Probably you talk about YouTube or Udemy, but yes, of course, that is an online video-based tutorial which does not have a two-way interaction. And over that, we do have a solution for you to overcome such challenges that you may look forward to have a training which is organized by Knowledge Hut with experienced trainers who can have a two-way interaction with you and resolve your queries and answer your questions during the training hours as well. So you may look forward for any of these options, or I would be mostly recommending you to have a, a virtual instructor-led training organized by Knowledge Hut to look forward to get your queries resolved while you are preparing for the examination. And of course, there are a lot of content which will be shared with you during this training period. That is, of course, the syllabus, which will be covered as a part of the training and given you all the details with respect to that. Additionally, the sample questions play a very vital role to understand what kind of typical questions will be asked to you and make you understand that how the questions can be answered during the examination. And of course, different mock tests or mock assessments to make you feel the reality of the examination so that you can be very confident with respect to the examination. And that's what we will be addressing during these kind of trainings, which will be very helpful and addressing your queries and giving you that confidence to answer the examination questions and get you clarified with your first attempt. Next thing is to talk about exam schedules. Now, of course, you need to schedule an examination or need to know how frequently the exams are being conducted, how one can appear or apply for the certification and get certified. So, of course, I'll be helping you out here with a simple process that lets you know that how these examinations are being organized and how you can take one from them. So, the very first thing is how to apply. So, of course, I introduced you to the member boards initially on my first presentation. That is, there are country specific member boards, which generally allow you to look forward to the schedules. Each country board has a schedule calendar on their specific website. Now, just for your kind information, ISTQB is an international body where you have different countries who are associated with that. For example, India, we have Saudi Arabia, Malaysia, Singapore, and a number of such countries who are associated with that, where each country has a local body doing that job for you. For example, India has ITB, Indian Testing Board. KSA has KSA TQB, the KSA Testing Qualification Board. Malaysia has MTB, and similarly, Singapore has STB. Singapore Testing Board. Now, these are your point of contact called as member boards to look forward to schedule your examination. So you can visit their specific websites and you can 
to look forward to what kind of schedules they have for you and you can pick a date and apply for your examination regarding the prerequisite if you are looking for any second level examination the first examination or previous examination in that tree will be your prerequisite otherwise for ctfl which is foundation level certification which is the very first examination of istqb tree you do not have any specific prerequisite for example no certifications no prior experience or any kind of training which you would have taken from a registered organization or any such uh, different body so all you need to know is having a good knowledge of ist or testing concepts and you can apply for the foundation level but team do remember that when you come to advanced level certifications in the tree the foundation level or the previous examination will be a prerequisite for your next exam the exam is offered in two different modes that is online as well as offline where online is now which is commonly going on due to the pandemic worldwide and offline has been called off for some moment but yes istqb offers you both the ways to appear for your examination where online you will be given or you will be called to a affiliated center and you can write your examinations there offline also you will be invited to a public examination center where you will write a paper based examination but not obviously write a subjective examination because the examination pattern is mcq that means only mcq question will be asked to you which is objective type so each question will have probably different options and only one option or different option in different level of examination will be right answer so for example if you are talking about ctfl that is certified tested foundation level the exam type is you have 40 mcqs and each question carries four options and only one can be right at any point of time okay only one will be right at any point of time but at the same time if you look at some advanced certification like test analyst test analyst has different options for example we have 75 mcqs and each question may have five to six options and sometimes they ask you to select multiple choices that means you may have be asked to select two or more options out of these six options so yes as you get into the advanced level certifications your examination will be slightly complicated than the foundation level certifications so you have to prepare accordingly for different certifications but the best part of this board or the certification is you do not have any negative marking so the best part is because you do not have to worry about making an answer wrong even if you go wrong you don't have anything to lose except the mark for that question not from the marks which you have already earned so it's really beneficial for anyone taking istqb that even if you do not have any clue about any question then still you can at least attempt it you never know how lucky you are to get that through the passing criteria throughout all the examination is 65% that means no matter which certification you are looking forward to which certification you are appearing for be it foundation be it advanced level or be it specialized certifications you will have 65% score to be claimed to pass the examination but yes the marks will be different for different examination for example right here if you say ctfl it is of 40 mcq and total marks is 40 because each question carries one mark each whereas if you talk about certain advanced level certifications not all the question carry equal weightage as you see some of the questions may ask you to select multiple choices thus they may have a greater value to that question so say for example if they ask you to select three options then the points will be three for that question and the scores may be up to 120 as total and 75 65% of that is what you need to have with you to pass that respective examination but yeah 65% of any total score is followed throughout the istqb examination 
The cost of the examination is not unique or specific. It varies depending on country to country. Different countries have different costs set for the ISTQB certification, depending on either their cost of living or kind of economy or their currency. So you may experience a different cost for different country. Specific to India, you have the cost of any examination is 4720. That is INR 4720 only. So you can look forward to get certified for such cheap costs. But probably in different countries, it might be due to under $20 or maybe more as well. So yeah, that's about examination schedule. And that's really important to know that how people can look forward to get prepared and schedule their examination and how easy it would be for you to look forward to, to get certified with ISTQB. Now, the most important part of this webinar is to understand how to pass the examination, where we would like to tell you that there are a lot of such things which need to be taken care of, not just having the knowledge of testing or not having your uh, just having the experience of your real time industries sometime may not help you to pass the examination. Why? Because it's not that your ISTQB is away from your practices. It's just that because ISTQB is irrespective of any organization or any domain. So these are not specific to any particular domain because the examination is open for any audience out there globally so yes a user can look forward to learn some of the generic terms and terminology process standards and a lot of other things which are related to different concepts which help any individual to apply back to their domain and industry practices so yes you would need a lot of supporting material to prepare well for your examination and get through the examination on your first attempt so of course, to pass the examination, you would need a lot of tips when you are preparing for these examination. Now, what do I mean by tips? Of course, there are certain shortcuts. There are certain tips which will help you to prevent spending a lot of time during your preparation for the certification. So yes, that tips will be shared only by the respective trainers who do an instructor-led training for you and share those kind of tips to assist your learning. There are also certain tricks to choose the correct answer. As you see, the syllabus might sound very simple when you look at any certification. So the questions will be very tricky. Tricky in the sense that sometimes when you look at a particular question, all the four options may sound similar to each other, but you know that not all the answers are correct only one will be right at any point of time. So of course, this is very important to understand the tricks of ISTQB to crack that and then get through the right answer. So yes, these tricks will help you to prepare well for your certification and get the right answers as well during the examination. Moreover, the time management is equally important because you don't get a comfort to relax and write your examination for how long you want to write it. So a lot of examination, or I can say all the examination come with a time box. For example, a CTFL foundation examination comes with a duration of 60 minutes. That means you get 60 minutes to answer 40 questions, roughly around one and a half minute to answer each question. And that's really crucial because sometimes the questions may be tricky and difficult to answer that within one and a half minute of time. And for that, you need actually the first two things to save your time during the examination. And that's really important to also deal with time management at the same time. So yes, that will help you to keep up the good work well within the given timeline. Additionally, yes, a mind mapping to avoid traps. As I was talking about, the questions might not be straightforward. They will be very tricky to get dealing with that. So of course, mind mapping is really important to help you address those trickiness and understand how the questions are being asked to you, how to filter out the main part of it, and then 
get going with the options to pick the right answer. And that's what we call it as mind mapping to help you understand that how this content will be put to you during the examination. As an additional concept, of course, the sample question helps you a lot to understand how typically a question is asked to you during the examination. No matter you know the concept well, sometimes you may fail to answer it right. So it's really important to have a good practice with a lot of sample questions to understand the pattern, understand the typical question types, and how to get through the question understanding and the right answer. A lot of advanced level certification include a scenario-based question. That means a real-time scenario will be provided to you during the examination, which may be probably a page long. So one page of paragraph or story or probably a scenario which you have to go through and pick out the key areas out of that. And then look for the options and address what is best at that point of time. So obviously, all the six options are actually correct. But what they want to know from you that as a test analyst or as a test manager, what do you think is the best step to be taken depending on the scenario discussed above? And that's where your experience gets valued. Your knowledge from the industry practices adds a lot of input with respect to that to answer such things. And sample questions will assist you to do the same. Additionally, a practice test will obviously boost your confidence. A lot of mock assessment will be conducted during the training period, which does not happen during an online course, or probably when you read a book, then you have all, you know, at least like some of your questions unanswered because an author cannot respond to you while you're reading the book. So training helps you to get through these mock assessments, which gives you a real time experience of the examination. So it will have the same standard of questions. It will have the similar timeline to answer the questions and you will be put exactly under the same pressure or I can say same environment to see and believe that, okay, this is what I have been through. This is what I have learned and this is what they are expecting me to do. And this is what I have scored. Now that mock will actually let you know what areas you are weak at and what more you need to put your effort towards and help you prepare efficiently for the entire syllabus to pass the examination at one go.